What's up, everybody? Welcome to the BlueBot Tech Channel. I'm Zach. This is Jason. We're a new channel that plan to focus on topics ranging from all things tech, such as DIY, smart home devices, 3D printing, security topics, or even reviews of the latest gadgets. With that being said, we're always open to suggestions for future videos, so please leave a like or a comment below to see more videos. For today's project, we'll be automating plantation-style blinds in a way that takes ordinary blinds and turns them into Wi-Fi controlled smart devices. Capable of scheduling routines like opening at sunrise and closing at sunset by using Home Assistant Server. With any project on our channel, we're going to try to rank it on the Blue Bot Tech scale of hardness. This plantation blind automation project, we judge the scale of difficulty to be around 80. While this project is a bit higher on the difficulty scale, we tried our best to try and make this as easy as possible. However, a few things that drive the difficulty scale up are the need for some soldering, potentially some editing of Node MCU firmware, and modifying of STL files to fit your needs. Again, we will try to provide all we can in the description below the video. All right guys, for this build, I used a 3D printer to house all the parts and the wires and everything. Right here is the STL file that I created in Tinkercad. And you guys can find the link in the description to download it. But if you don't have a 3D printer, you can always use a plastic case or a box or really anything that might house the, the parts. Now this um, STL file is definitely designed specifically for my plantation blind style. I know there's multiple styles out there and um, this may not work for yours, but this could definitely be like a jumping off point for you to kind of, you know, customize your own build. And again, I used Tinkercad and it was super easy to kind of figure out and jump into and just start kind of messing with stuff and design things out. One thing that I do recommend is uh, to have a pair of calipers though to measure everything whenever you're kind of designing stuff in 3D. All right guys, this is a 28BYJ48 5 volt stepper motor. We'll be using two of them for my build today. And we're going to be converting this from a unipolar to bipolar motor here shortly so we can push 12 volts to it and increase its strength. This is a node MCU that we'll be using for the project um, at ESP8266. And this is our Kingprint DRV8825 stepper motor driver module. And we'll be using two of these as well. And again, if you guys wanted to pick up any of these parts, all the links will be in the description below. So definitely check it out. And this is the QNQI five pack, ultra small DC to DC three amp buck converter. All right, just to reiterate for this build, we will be using two 28 BYJ 48 stepper motors, one ESP 8266 node MCU two DRV8825 stepper motor drivers, one buck converter, one 12 volt power supply, any small wires of your choosing. For mine, I'll be using breadboard wires um, and then solder for tinning and connecting wire. The tools that we'll be using for this build are wire strippers, a soldering iron, screwdriver, Phillips and flathead, a 3D printer, which is optional, and a crimping toolkit, which is also optional. I will say that I definitely wish I uh, used this instead of having to solder on um, ends from jumper cables, but um, you know, it's definitely optional. And as you can see there, we have the prices for each of the parts. That's definitely subject to change with the markets. In total, this should cost $73 to get started. And it's roughly $40 per pair of blinds, which is definitely not too bad. All right, here's the wiring diagram for this build. Because we're using two stepper motors, we'll be using two drivers. And one thing of note is that because our plantation blinds have a left and a right side, each stepper motor will be mounted on opposite sides. And this is meaning that the left sided motor will need to spin in the opposite direction as the right side motor. And uh, one of the ways to get around this issue is that we connected the left stepper motor wires backwards. So for example, the driver one is wired blue, yellow, orange, pink, or pins three, four, five, six while driver two was wired pink, orange, yellow, blue, or pins three, four, five, six. All right, we're gonna be modifying this stepper motor from a unipolar to bipolar. 
And one of the reasons that we're doing that is that the blinds are pretty heavy, so they'll require a little bit more strength than what the five volts will and the unipolar will allow it. So to get around that, we'll just be converting it to bipolar and pushing 12 volts to the motor. You can see that little tab right there. We can just take a little flathead screwdriver to lift it up. Not too difficult. Just pry it up. Um, there's some clips that kind of get stuck, so you kind of got to work it out. All right. You should see there's a red wire and a center connected line. And we want to be, we want to cut that line. And that's basically going to turn this, um, this stepper motor into a bipolar motor. Just got to scrape that. Sever the connection. careful you don't hit anything else yeah hopefully you can see it see that a little bit a little hard to see but once you've done that then I'll just clean up the wires I'll cut out the red wire That and then cut that end and you can use a, a flathead to kind of push it out but I'm just gonna cut it for speed sake for this one all right there you go we'll put the cap back on um, sometimes it's not it won't fit perfectly but that's that's okay a lot of the stepper motors I have 3d printed housing so they just kind of sit inside of it and it holds every holds the casing you know together all right just snap back on all right there you go now uh, bipolar and we can push 12 volts to it
Before uploading the Arduino sketch to the Node MCU, we need to go to the Arduino website, download their IDE, and then look for your operating system, download the Windows installer, and then install it. All right, so the sketch included in the description has a link to all the libraries that are used that you can see right here. And all the pins that are used in the sketch right here are the default pins used in my wiring diagram. So all you really need to do is update the Wi-Fi and MQTT information um, highlighted right here. Then you want to go to file preferences and then down here you want to put input the following um, and again it will be in the link in the description and then click OK. And then the next thing you want to do is go to tools and then you want to go to board. Yours is going to look a little different here because I already have the board loaded up but you'll go to boards, board manager and then what you're going to do is scroll down to find the ESP8266 right down here. And then you're gonna wanna click the install button. Once it's finished installing, then you'll just close that out and then you'll, and then you'll load up the board. Choose your board for mine, it's in the Node MCU 1.0 ESP12E. And that should load it up and you'll see these details show up in this um, tools panel right here. All right, now to upload the sketch, the next thing you need to do is you need to um, connect your node MCU to the USB port on your PC and then make sure that your ports show up it should have a COM port three or four here. Um, if not, you may have to restart Arduino's IDE or your computer or unplug it, plug it back in. Sometimes it's a little fickle, but um, once you do get it to show up, you can then um, click verify here on the sketch and that's going to compile. Make sure there's no errors. And once that's finished loading. All right, that's finished loading. You should see that um, right here. There's no, no errors. The next step is to then click the upload button here. And then it's gonna basically um, just upload it right to your Node MCU. If you get some errors, it could be COM port error. Like I said before, just restart, unplug the Node MCU, and then plug it back in and keep trying. But yeah, you should have no errors once it's done. And then you can just unplug it and uh, you should be good to go. All right. Once your Arduino sketch is uploaded to your Node MCU, we'll be able to change the stepper motor's position by sending integer numbers to the blue bot blinds position command or whatever you chose as your MQTT topic name. Um, for me to do this, I personally like to use Node Red as you can see here. And we'll use Node Red to first inject integer values to the motors to set their position and state. And then we'll finally test it using the open and close commands. Um, this is just a inject that we're using and we're using payload. We're sending an integer value of one to the topic blue bot blinds. And of course here you have whatever your MQTT name that you used. And here we have the MQTT in bubble. And for this bubble, you'll need to set up your MQTT server information. Um, we will have a video on this as well, and that link will be in the description below. And we'll set our topic here like we did before and leave everything as you see it here. And then we have an MQTT out bubble and the same thing is uh, all the settings should be pretty much the same. Output is a string. And then we just have error checking here just, just for uh, if anything goes wrong. So first we're sending the integer value of one. We have to hit deploy to get everything loaded in. We'll hit open. You'll see disconnected because it's not connected just yet. So we'll hit open. All right, now it's injected the integer value one to our blue bot blinds 
separate motors. And then we're gonna inject the integer value 12, deploy again, click it. And then now finally, we're gonna send an open command. And that should, uh, you should see your stepper motor opening or closing. And you can do the same for the close, to test the close. All right, so once you have that all set up, you can pretty much do anything with a uh, Home Assistant in Node-RED. For mine, blinds personally, I have it based on time of day. So I'll have them opening up at sunrise and closing, you know, 30 minutes before sunset. And there, there's a whole host of other things that you can do. Once you have the cover YAML added to your configuration.yaml file, you'll then add it to your Home Assistant UI. So you go to overview, you're going to click configure UI. We'll add a card here, entities, and then we'll name it Bluebot Blinds, or whatever you want to name it. And then you'll find the Bluebot Blinds name down here, and you'll select it. In mine, as you can see, I don't have the Bluebot Blinds um, because I didn't add it to my um, configuration.yaml file. But whatever you named the cover name for it, it should show up here in the Entities tab for yours. And there you have it. You have the arrows to go up and down and stop the blinds, and you should have everything ready to go.